Well, it's been a long time since I've done a garden video, so I'm going to start off with a uh, update of this summer's garden. So I figured I'll start here. I planted some strawberries here and some uh, husk cherries. And the husk cherries aren't doing too great. There's this bug that keeps getting on them, and no matter what I do, you can see the white powder. I've tried diatomaceous earth. I've tried other organic uh, things to get rid of them, and it's just not working. So hopefully they won't get to the strawberries. Um, they're starting to actually produce now. And uh, that's Frankie. <laughs> and uh, I had a critter that came and ate the roots of one of the husk cherry plants. So that was a goner. I did have onions and garlic in here, and again, I had another critter coming up from underneath and was taking them, so I have no idea. Um, this is my overgrown um, pear tomato. It's an unusual one, but they've been producing nicely. So I've been getting lots. I've been trying to keep it trimmed back, but as you can see, it's gotten away on me. Now, uh, these little boxes up here on this retaining wall... They're uh, six feet by two feet deep each, and I have uh, five tomato plants in this particular one, um, two of them being a sweet tangerine tomato plant, and as you can tell, it's just doing gorgeous, and I caged those, and in the back I put some indeterminates, and I was trying to train them up ladders, but <laughs> as you can see by that uh, pear tomato one, it's... Uh, yeah, it gets a little over, or a little, you know, unruly. Um, in the back there, you, you can't really see it from here, but uh, I'm just trying a, a new, br a new type that um, they're supposed to be extra healthy, extra antioxidants, stuff like that. And then this one, and it's been producing nicely, is a sweet olive, and oh my gosh, these things are so good, um, especially when you find one. Well, this one has a little bit of green on the top. It's still good. But if, when you can find them, when they're completely ripe on the vine, oh my gosh, they are just so sweet. Now, in this six foot by two foot bed, I have peppers. Um, I have six in here. I had uh, originally made it so that there would be seven spots, but um, I just only had the six plants, so I planted them. So I, I planted them staggered and uh, I have one, two, three, four different varieties. I have the sweet banana peppers. I have a mild jalapeno pepper and those are I think ready to pick. These, uh, this one and the one behind it, they're supposed to be a miniature uh, golden bell or orange bell type tomato, I mean pepper. So, and they're getting a good size, and they look like they should be, you know, I mean, they fattened up, so they should be about ready to put some color on. And then these are my favorites. If you've seen any of my videos in the past, these are um, called mariachi, and they're a mildly hot, but, oh, to me they're hot, hot, and my friends just love them. They make the best um, pepper jelly, like a hot pepper jelly out of these. They're just wonderful. And then I also pickle them. They're great. And as you can tell, there's two plants there as well. And they've been bushing out really nicely. Um, down in this bed, it's a 4x8. I planted cucumbers, and I put this trellis up with the plan of training them up the trellis. But as you can see, <laughs> they didn't want to cooperate too much, and they kind of sprawled all over. But that's okay. That's what this area is for. And then I planted a bunch of beans, and I had plans of them growing up this trellis. <laughs> Best laid plans, right? But I had a problem with squirrels, so I got a trap so I could trap them and relocate them. Um, so, But anyways, I did end up with a few bean plants, and as you can tell, they're producing. And so are the cucumbers. I have a, I forget the name of it, but I have a regular, oops, can you see that there? A regular type cucumber, and then on the other side, hi Frankie, <laughs> I have um, the lemon cucumbers. I've been picking them like crazy, so there's not very many that are 
picking size yet, but as you can tell, there's lots of babies down in there. I mean, I love these lemon cucumbers. They do so well here. Okay, so back up here, tomatoes, peppers. Um, this is my zucchini. I have two zucchini plants in here. One's a yellow zucchini. Isn't that gorgeous? And I've been getting quite a few of those. They've been really nice. And then this one's uh, a regular type, you know, just a green zucchini. Um, I don't have any full-grown ones on that right now, but... And then what I did is I interplanted with a few herbs. Um, the basil, you know, I let it flower to attract the bees. The bees just love it. Some lissom for the same reason. And then this is a purple Russian kale. This stuff makes the best kale chips. I've made kale chips in the past with store-bought kale. Just try it out. And it was alright, but it was a little tough. But this stuff, oh, it's so tender and delicious. Kale chips turn out fantastic. Okay, so that's that bed. And then down here I have um, succession plantings of carrots and beets. Um, I've been picking heavily in this, this area here. And then this was the next, the next one. I don't know why there's so much more green and lush in the second planting. This was the third planting, and it was very sporadic. Of course, this is when it was getting hotter in the summer, and the plants are a little tiny and small. Um, that's a uh, radish plant that I've let go to seed because I want to collect some seeds, and that's just some starts that I still need to plant. Um, that's a pepper plant that I started from from seeds, so I'm going to probably put it in with the rest of the peppers and fill that back out. But yeah, um, I, I have to pick these beets too. Look at how big those got. Crazy. But yeah, these have been, uh, um, they're, one of them's a purple carrot, and I just absolutely love these. These are so tasty. Um, and they're a good size. They're absolutely gorgeous on the inside too. Anyways, oh, and then I interspersed with onions. Um, then I had some peas, of course, as you can tell. There, it's time to get those out of there. In the back, one foot, and then on the front foot, I planted six of these miniature cabbages. Of course, there's only three here right now because I've already eaten the other three. They were absolutely delicious. Nice and firm and just gorgeous. Um, and the, what's funny is because I didn't want to disturb the roots of the other plants so I just cut them off and all this grew so if you're into juicing or anything these would be great little leaves to to juice then here I have melons I have a um, cantaloupe and a a little um, watermelon plant and uh, they haven't they've been blooming a bit but there's no fruits or anything set on them so hopefully that'll happen soon more of this beautiful red russian kale i'm surprised i thought kale was a cool weather crop but because it, it gets really hot here it gets 100 degrees during the day easy and i'm surprised how well this stuff's doing it's just absolutely gorgeous and then i uh, planted some herbs back in here i have some uh, sage and this is a rosemary now i planted it in a pot and then put the pot into the ground so that it could be part of the drip irrigation system but um, because I, I eventually want to move this out into my front garden um, so that's why that's like that but look at this purple kale I mean it's just gorgeous like I said it makes fit oh gosh I can really smell that rosemary after touching it now this is my oregano I just trimmed it this is like the fourth or fifth time I completely whacked it down again this this year already and have been drawing it giving it away everything it's two different kinds absolutely wonderful in the back here I planted some um, thyme and it's gone to flower uh, the stevia this is one that I started like four or five years ago from seed and it's been this huge mass now well I've trimmed it all back already this year you can see the cut part there and of course it's re-sprouting so then I'll dry that again and powder it up and then of course some sage um, some of your common chives 
um, borage, that, or bora, however you pronounce it, borage. I like it for the flowers. Um, they taste a little bit like cucumbers, I think. And then garlic chives, this is good to, to uh, cook with, too. Now here is a couple of uh, other squash. This one here is a crookneck squash. Uh, you can see the bees going crazy in there, but there's a crookneck. There's a bunch of babies. Oops, I better get back. Let them do their business. And then over here are um, spaghetti squash. And, you know, you just look around and you can see them all. There's one resting on the little ledge from the uh, retaining wall. <laughs> So that's doing really nice. And then here, my first time trying potatoes. So a friend gave me four potatoes, three, three of them sprouted. And what I've done is I've planted them each in their own container and sunk the containers in the garden and put the watering system up onto them. So I put one potato per container. However, one of them did not take. But, you know, hey, that's what happens. And then I have three different kinds of mints here. I have a regular peppermint, I have an apple mint, and I have a spearmint. The apple mint and the spearmint are my favorites, but as you can tell, I've cut them all back at one point, and, you know, they're regrowing again. Um, it's time for me to redo the apple mint and spearmint by the looks of it. But I dry it, and, oh my gosh... The smell is incredible. Wow, this one's just like going crazy. But I planted them in their own pots as well and uh, ran the drip irrigation into them like I did with the potatoes. I have, in all these boxes, I have the drip irrigation set up standard. And they all, each individual box, if I can find it here, has its own shutoff shut off valve or ball valve and uh, then I run the line along the inner edge and then what I do is I have four dripper lines that are six inches apart off of each one so they're all standard all these little boxes all the way down so that I can pretty much plant whatever I want and it works it works really good it's a really good system for me and then this is broccoli that's gone wild that one in the back was a purple broccoli, and I just wanted to save the seeds from it, so I purposely went it let, went it, let it go to flower. These ones, um, I had already cut the main stems off of them, and then these are the side shoots, and I just didn't get around to um, doing anything with them, so <laughs> they kind of went crazy. But uh, yeah, they had general idea. Yeah, see, there's the little seed pods forming. Whoops, sorry, bad camera camera look there seed pods forming but oh and the flower or the potatoes are flowering too so I'm not sure exactly when to harvest them I think when the leaves start to go brown is when you're supposed to harvest those so I'll do that um, hmm. there's some of my compost that I used for uh, for topping off the potato plants this is a, these are altered dwarf trees, and uh, that one's an apricot, and that one's, uh, trying to remember what it's called now. Um, no, that's the apricot, and that's a nectarine. <laughs> but I only got, uh, like, two fruits off of each one, and I didn't even get to eat them. The birds got to eat them, because we had such wacky weather this spring. So, anyways, uh, so... There's an overview of the garden in general, and my little kitty cat there sunning himself. He just loves it. He loves to get up there and hide in amongst the plants. I've been very fortunate. He hasn't dug or anything, but he does like to sit in amongst the plants. And then, oh, look at those tomatoes. Aren't those just absolutely gorgeous? Green fried tomatoes. Oh, no fried green tomatoes. I always say that backwards. And then this is an apple tree that someone gave me, a friend of mine. And I've got one of these rotator compost bin for my extra compost. And this one I planted this year. It's an altar dwarf um, cherry tree, so it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Um, the compost bin, um, I do most of my composting inside with my kitchen scraps uh, with my worms. 
And uh, anyway, so that's just a general quick overview. Uh, looks like the that one tomato plant has taken over half of the bin or the the box next to it, the way it's fallen over, uh, the tomato ladder and everything. I just didn't do a good job of keeping it trimmed. I was keeping them trimmed up because there was tons of leaves. You couldn't even see these tomatoes before and I trimmed them all up inside. Those are indeterminates. That's why I let those go wild. This was a indeterminate. Those were determinants, those two plants. And then that was an indeterminate. What I did is I kept it trimmed really good at the bottom, but then it just got away from me on the top and it just went crazy. And you can see my sweet olives back there. But yeah, next year with the tomato plants, I'm... You know, I tried spacing them out really good because there's only really five tomato plants in there. I mean, it doesn't look like it, but that's only five plants. Um, three three uh, indeterminates in the back and then two determinants in the front. But, yeah, I'm going to have to space them out even more next year. So, so anyways, um, my little garden back here in the backyard turned out really good this year. I've already been getting lots off of it and trying to package it all up. So anyways, I hope this inspires you to get out and grow something. I mean, this this stuff is so much better than store-bought. It just, the tastes are just, I can't, you can't even compare them. <laughs> anyways, thanks for watching. Bye for now.